But I think if we put it into contemporary terms, he was a businessman. And he gave his, uh, he uh, leased out his business, he gave it, he gave it to others to um, uh, put it in their hands to, uh, to manage, and he went off um, elsewhere. But those to whom he entrusted his business were not honest. And so he sent people to take the profits, to bring him his share, and they refused. And it says some they beat, beat up, others they killed. And so it says that finally he sent his son, thinking that they would respect his son. But instead, those to whom he gave his business killed his son. Now, I think this, uh, and so then the Lord asked, well, what, what will this, what will this uh, owner, this landowner, this business owner do uh, to, these, to these people who have who so dishonored him? And they said, well, he'll, uh, he'll cast them out. He'll, he'll have vengeance on them and cast them out. To the Jews, when the Lord, when the Lord said this, this story, when the Lord said this parable, this must have been a terrifying thing. Because, he said, the stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Because he knew he was ta- they knew he was talking about them. They knew that he was talking about how their, uh, their forebearers and their leaders had uh, mistreated and beaten and killed the prophets who were sent to them. How they disregarded the message that was given to them. Uh, how they refused to repent. And finally, in, as a prophetic act, he said, and in the end, he, the, the business owner sent his son, whom they murdered, thinking that they could seize the inheritance. They presumed on that inheritance. They presumed that they could simply snatch it away, rather than be the ones for whom it was, for whom it was intended. They thought they were the ones for whom it was intended because they were there. When the Lord said this, he foreshadowed not only his own death, but rather also that those who thought that they would be heirs of the covenant would be cast out that the Jews who expected to receive the benefits of having kept the law and of being the descendants of Abraham and uh, had all this expectation simply because they were there would not receive the promise that was given to them, but rather would be given to others. It's a very important thing for us to understand as Orthodox Christians that we as the church are the new Israel. We as the church are the true Israel, the true Israel of God that, uh, that, that was established by the Messiah because that's who Jesus is. He was the Jewish Messiah who came that we might know him and we might recognize him when he comes again. And it's to us that those promises of the Old Covenant, it's to us that all of those uh, that, uh, that the prophets referred as to be the heirs of Abraham and Isaac and of Jacob. It's to us who would receive that, that promise because in Christ we share his inheritance. 
The Lord ends this, par- this parable with, and the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. Even this also is prophecy on our Lord's part, that he would, re- that he would be rejected and yet become the chief cornerstone of the church, become the chief cornerstone of that, of that, that new temple, that temple not made with human hands, that temple which would be uh, constructed out of, out of living members, us. Not with the old stones of the old temple, not with a renewal of simply an archaeological monument, but a new temple filled with grace, filled with light, the true heir of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. This prospect, this this image that the Lord used must have been terrifying because the people saw in it their own disinheritance. They recognized their sin but did not repent. So brothers and sisters, what do we take from this? This is kind of, it's actually kind of a hard, hard parable to preach on. We have to remember that it's, it's not simply by association that we come to salvation. It's not simply because we join the church uh, or have been, or have been uh, raised in the church um, and uh, baptized once a long time ago and, and maybe showed up when we were kids and then it's the hatch match dispatch crowd, you know, the, the marriages, baptisms, and uh, funerals. Um, We receive those gifts, we receive those promises. We actualize that inheritance by being active members of the church, by being active not only in coming to services and receiving the sacraments, but by that living experience of communion with God, which is a life of faith. That, that faith which is the experience of the kingdom of God here and now, that faith which is this living relationship with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and thereby with the Father because Jesus shares his own sonship with us. This is how we become heirs of those promises and heirs of that kingdom. Not simply, not simply through association, not simply because we've called ourselves Orthodox Christians, but because the reality of our life is that we have lived like Orthodox Christians and that we, have, that we have conducted ourselves both in, in private as well as in public as Orthodox Christians. So let us take this parable and be sobered by it. You know, recognizing that those who expected to receive the promises have been cast off. They've been trimmed and cut off and thrown into the pile to make, to make space for us so that we all together might be united in that living, in that living body in that, in, and be built into that new temple by the grace of the Holy Spirit of which the cornerstone is our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love for mankind, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages.